All right. So today we are going over gaining professional experience um, in this, this, this workshop. Um, there are multiple workshops, multiple career academy workshops that are available online to watch. Um, so if you'd like to watch the previous five, they are all on our website at career.mercy.edu under, under next steps and then under attend workshop and events. So all of those YouTube videos are posted there. If you watch and or attend five out of eight of the career academies, you are entered into a raffle. Um, you can watch those later. Um, you do not have to be there in person, so you can go onto the website and watch the recordings. But by being here today, you are included in the, in the raffle as long as you have your name present and you take the survey at the end. Uh, so Sam will be putting the survey into the chat and then you'll get a QR code at the end that you can open up to find the survey as well. All right, so I'm going to start now by sharing the screen and kind of getting right into the presentation and I will pass it off to Sam. Great, thank you, Liam. All right, welcome everybody to Game Professional Experiences. We're going to start today uh, by talking about what professional experiences are and why they're important. Then we're going to go through different types of professional experiences, describing them in depth and finishing off with how to navigate applications when you're applying for these different types. Okay, so Liam, if you could go to the first slide, please. All right, so why do you need professional experiences? Well, professional experiences make you competitive. They often are aligning with the different skills that we as a career team are telling you students to go get in order to be ready for applying to jobs once you graduate and then internships along the way. Often the skills that we are repeating students need to have align with the eight NACE competencies that uh, they're an organization that we follow nationally, a nationally accredited organization. And skills like critical thinking, leadership, professionalism are all skills that employers are looking for uh, once you get out, get out ready to search for jobs. And so you're making yourself competitive by having those skills um, when you're going to find professional experiences. And then it's also helping you compare yourself to other applicants who are applying to the same internships and jobs. So you're, you have an edge if, you're, if you do have these skills and you're ready uh, with them kind of at your side, helps set you apart. And then with regards to building your resume with keywords, this is really important because when you go for competitive internships or jobs or really, really any company who is using an applicant tracking system to look through applicants in the first round of review when you're applying to jobs, they're going to be looking for those keywords on your resume. So you'll be able to have these keywords on your resume if you have done things like join clubs and uh, have certain bullet points from different internships on your resume. So that's also another reason it's very important. And finally, it helps you connect the classroom to the workplace. So you're learning things in class and you're hearing about them and maybe you're even meeting people who are hearing about people who have had these different jobs and careers, but you haven't actually seen it for yourself. So to be able to do that through things like volunteering, like internships, like part-time jobs, really helps you understand a little bit more about what you're learning through your major. Next slide, please. And so along those lines, you're learning what you want to do. You're thinking, is this really what I thought it was? Maybe you are a vet tech major and you think that being uh, in a veterinarian is all about working with animals, but there's also a human component to it because you're working with people, you're working with the owner of those pets or, uh, and so forth. So it helps really kind of bridge the knowledge gap of what you may not know about a certain career through your own experience before you commit to a job after graduation or before committing to grad school. And then it helps you reflect also, makes you think, how does this align with who I am, what my interests are, what my skills and values and personality is, uh, which of course is constantly changing. So even after you finish at Mercy and you go on into the workforce and wherever your career takes you, you're gonna be changing all of those things. So you're always gonna to wanna to be reflecting and thinking about who you are and how, and what the best career to align with who you are is. For example, someone who might be, you know, craving structure in a job may not like working ad hoc hours. So that's one way to think about 
who am I and what kind of job or career do I want? And then it also helps you determine what you need to do next. So you might ask yourself, now that I have done this volunteer opportunity, who do I need to talk to? What more do I need to do to advance my career? What skills do I need to acquire? Uh, and it's just a continuous process of you asking yourself, how do I get to where I want to go? Next slide, please. And finally, you're building your network through these professional experiences. So this includes friends and family, classmates, faculty, your professors, any other professionals in the organization that you work for. And of course, those who you connect with through LinkedIn, like-minded professionals in industry you're interested in going into, any other peers in Handshake. There's a whole network on Handshake of students you can connect with. And this is such a valuable thing to have and to nurture as you go along in your college career to find those internships, those jobs later on. It's one of the main ways that students can get those opportunities. And so a quick question for those of you who are on with us live, if you can add into the chat or maybe unmute yourself for a moment, we're wondering what are some of your professional experiences that you've had based on what I've said so far? I've worked a couple of summer jobs um, where I've done some reading literacy and I've assisted uh, people with reading for summer reading buddies in terms of students and then for helping mentors and assisting them paired with students. It's not necessarily something that I'm studying right now, like in terms of education, but it's something that I did because I'm interested in. And although it may not be something that I'm interested in for a career point of view, it's still something that I like to do in being able to give back to the community and help others. That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing, Catherine. I think there's lots of transferable skills you can gain from those that can help you in whatever career you end up pursuing. So good to keep in mind for writing your resume and for interviews later on. Anybody else want to share real quick before we move on? Alrighty, I think we're good to go. Okay, so starting with the first kind of collection of professional experiences, clubs and volunteering. So with regards to clubs, there's a lot of benefits to joining clubs and Mercy has so many of them. A lot of you may already be aware that Campus Groups, the new platform Student Life is using to promote clubs is active. And it's something that actually Career has recently joined. So I recommend that if you don't know about it, if you haven't been on it yet to go check it out. It's kind of like a typical social media site where clubs are posting about their events and then you can join and follow groups uh, and you know create your own that's definitely something that you can do as well but we have so many different types for all different majors art club debate club there's bsu naba exercise science club theater club so there's there's so many different major i guess related clubs you can join but they are most of the time from what i've heard open to a lot of you know students who are interested in all different from all walks of life and all different careers so that's definitely a, a great thing to do to start to gain experience when you might be a new college student. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have had other prior experience in that area to join a club. And the benefit that you gain from clubs most of the time is in developing your teamwork skills, uh, your leadership experience. You can also have opportunities to network with other students because of this group that you're a part of. So it really has a lot of benefits to it uh, when it comes to skill building. And then you might remember that these experiences in clubs are ways to build your resume. So like I said, if you haven't had any prior experience, maybe in uh, art or as a student pursuing legal studies, but you want to get something on your resume that's related to that field to start uh, building your resume, then you can join a club and start to get that experience. You might have an opportunity for a specific skill that you can add like fundraising or like marketing for that club. And that's just another bullet point that you can add to your resume to help prepare you and say that you've done that thing to help uh, get you ready for your career. Uh, and one last point to make is that in addition to having maybe as a senior and later on in your college career, having done internships and maybe being involved in a lot of other things, if you're also involved in a club, it can show you that you're capable of taking on a full plate of work and that you have uh, you're a multifaceted student which is always something uh, that is is nice to see an employer likes to see that how much you know you can handle and that you have a full plate 
And I'd also just a quick plug for us is, you know, we have student advisory boards for all of our career communities. Um, so that could be another potential similar to a club for you to join that, you know, can build your resume and give you some of those leadership experiences as well. Absolutely. Thank you for pointing that out. Thanks, Joy, for dropping that link in the chat as well. Appreciate that. No problem. On to volunteering now. So benefits of volunteering are manifold, kind of similar to how clubs prepare you. Volunteer opportunities can prepare you too, and they're good starting points if you don't have a lot of experience. So you can build a lot of skills like those that we've already mentioned, including teamwork and leadership. And you might realize that it's also an opportunity to build global competency, which is another main skill from the eight NACE competencies that I mentioned before, um, because a lot of volunteer opportunities have you working with different groups of people and maybe even traveling, like for the Peace Corps. Uh, a lot of them are national and international. And so that's another benefit to you to have on your resume to help differentiate you and set you apart as being able to say, you know, I did this, I committed time to do this. Uh, and it says a lot about your teamwork, a lot about your willingness to take initiative. And that is just such a great way to bolster your resume. Another benefit is that you, by volunteering, are working for a company. So maybe it's the American Red Cross, maybe it's Volunteer New York, which is actually one of our employer partners. And you get experience in working for a company, even if you're not necessarily getting paid for the work that you do. Um, you have that experience of what it's like to work on a team and work in maybe even a, a corporate environment. Another benefit is that this can lead, if you're interested in going to public service or a nonprofit organization, can lead to a career in that. Um, by starting early, you're able to get exposure to what it's like to work for organizations in those sectors. And lastly, there are lots of networking opportunities. Really any experience you have is a networking opportunity. And so you can't really understate that too much and volunteer opportunities are another time to do that. So to find these opportunities, you can go to Handshake. We have some listed there with, like I said, our one of our employer partners is Volunteer New York and they post um, volunteer opportunities there. And of course on their website, you can also ask Student Life what they might know about. I mean, I know offhand a couple of clubs who have volunteer opportunities as part of their club, like Rotorac Club. And so you can go to Student Life and join clubs and volunteer through them, or even maybe ask your local businesses. There's a time right now where so many people are in need of help in hospitals and other businesses that you know might be close to closing need assistance and need help in probably a lot of different tasks. So you can always check out your local businesses and see, just stopping by to ask, hey, what kind of help do you need here? Or maybe you see an ad somewhere in your neighborhood. So that's another opportunity to find ways to get experience through that. All right, next slide, please. Thank you. So on to micro internships. This is a niche of a type of experience that you might have not heard of before because it's maybe not relatively new, but it is now kind of coming up to the surface in, during the pandemic. La, that's another way to get experience and find some work in a time where businesses might not be doing so well and you might not be able to take on the usual internships that you see. Um, just because you know budgets are low and people aren't able to hire as much right now. The organization that we work with for micro internships, our partner is called Parker Dewey. So they're Parker Dewey micro internships and they actually have a page on our website with a link there that you see um, to help you set up a profile and start looking around their web page for micro internships. And what micro internships are, are short term often paid projects. And you can take on multiple projects at a time through the, their website. They are posted there, you can go apply to them there. They often go very quickly. So you'll see a project appear um, one day and then the next day it might be gone because they are quick and, they, and there are a lot of them uh, and students are on there kind of jumping on them when they get the chance. But these are typically a couple of week projects. Um, they last for a couple of weeks. And like I said, they are paid. For more information, definitely go to the link that Joy put in the chat. Thank you for that. Um, and find out how you can set up your profile and really what types of projects are being offered right now. But this is real work for real companies. These are real ways to work for employers and to meet 
real connections um, at employers, and it's all online. So these are remote opportunities, really kind of a no brainer that this is something that if you haven't done already, you should at least look into uh, and go to the website to find out more. Any questions on anything I have reviewed so far? Okay, I'm going to hand it nope. over to Liam now. Great. All right. So some other experiences that are great resume builders and, you know, will you know, gain that professional experience that you're looking for is jobs and internships. Um, so these are going to you know, be the foundations of things that you can be doing now that'll really kind of showcase and build your skills for when you look for that full time job after you graduate. So I know this is a wall of text, but you know, these are some of the great things that internships can do. Um, you know, they implement education and career exploration. Um, so what I mean by that is internships are a great way to apply the knowledge from classroom to the real world. So you're taking things that you've learned in the classroom and you're starting to kind of try to use them for real world experiences can really help you both ways. So not only is it gonna be helping you at an internship and network, but it's also going to kind of bring some of those experiences into the classroom. So having that kind of uh, connection is really helpful. It also helps increase your marketability. So these are resume builders. Um, they, the employers are looking for candidates with these experiences. So a lot of employers like to see students have some type of inter internship experience in the field. That way they can see, you know, who's going to be easiest to train, who's going to be really ready to do the job um, once they, you know, get to work. And of course, networking. Um, this, this helps to build that, that professional network you have. So as Sam had said, your network can be friends, family, um, your classmates, faculty, people that, you know, are at mercy. Um, but gaining those professional experiences from the internships with people who are working in the industry can be really helpful for you down the line. It can be, you know, people that could that you'll know when you're applying for a job at one organization, or they can introduce you to other people that are in the industry. Um, so the networking opportunities are are really valuable. They also will teach you a little bit about professionalism. You'll learn how a workplace operates. Um, you'll know how to act, and you know how to, to be a part of a professional workspace. So these are really necessary skills to succeed and. You know, a lot of employers are looking for professionalism now. I mean, one of the best ways to, to get it is to see it firsthand and to do an internship so you can see what it's like to be in a professional office day to day. As I mentioned, these build your, your, your resume. Um, they'll really help your resume stand out. Um, they'll make you a standout candidate and it'll be kind of one of the, the best things that you can talk about in your interview if, if you have done internships. And of course, it can help you figure out what you like and don't like. You can do an internship and you can love it and you can know this is, sorry, right, this is the career that I want to start. This is what I want to be doing. But it also can give you the other side. It can, you might do an internship and find out that you don't love exactly what that, that field is. And then it'll give you some insight and, and know kind of what to switch to or what to look at next. Um, so overall, internships are extremely valuable. And if you haven't thought about doing an internship while at Mercy, I would highly recommend it. Um, and I know that not everyone has time to do an internship, but there is still, because they might have, because people might have to do some type of work. They might not be able to do an internship that's unpaid. Um, a lot of internships are paid, but you might still need to have more of a standard part-time job or a full-time job. So what I would recommend to people in this situation is you might want to look for one of these jobs that are, are already in the industry, you know, a job that that um, might not necessarily need a degree for, but you can still be kind of working your way. These jobs can be just as valuable as internships. Um, you want to, they will lead to networking internships, uh, networking opportunities, and they'll want you to start know knowing people and gaining the in industry skills that you need. Um, one example I like to give of this is if say you, you know, you're thinking about a career in finance and or banking, you might want to look for a job in retail banking where you can be a teller. That's not necessarily a job that you need a degree for, but you can start working there right away, start meeting people in the industry and start gaining that professional experience. So if you can't or do not have time to do an internship and you really need to work, definitely look at the job that you're doing and see if you could potentially be doing a similar job, but in the industry that you want. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about navigating applications. So obviously uh, applications can be a little bit overwhelming. 
Um, they are a little bit complicated. And as we know that they can be sometimes frustrating. So first I wanna talk about where to apply. There's lots of different job boards out there. Uh, the big one I'm going to talk about is Handshake. I'll dive a little bit deeper into that on my next slide. But there's also Indeed, LinkedIn, Monster, and Internships.com. These are just some of the, the, the websites that I recommend going when looking for a job or internship. Now, a lot of these even have profiles. LinkedIn and Indeed, they have profiles that are there. And you're going to actually want to fill those out to the fullest extent that you can. You know, that's just them, you giving more information to potential employers. Um, we also have a lot of industry-specific um, job boards and, and places to look for internships and jobs. And you can find those at our, in our, in our resource guides, which are on our website. Um, so if you go to career.mercy.edu and then look at the different career community pages, each one of those will have a, a guidebook that'll have some you know, different job boards that can, can really lead you to what you're looking for. Now, Handshake. Handshake is our job board. It's a modern internship and job board that offers significantly improved user experience and functionality. Um, what it does is it connects you with over 425,000 employers. Um, a, a thousand different schools are already using it, and it connects you with all of these different employers. It's very intuitive. It's very easy to use. Um, you can make a profile that's very similar to, hand, uh, to LinkedIn, and I highly recommend making that profile. Um, that includes having an about me section and, you know, having a, a profile picture, but, you know, the more information you give it, the better it works for you. Um, LinkedIn has increased number of opportunities. There are employers there that are eager to connect with you. There are even company reviews. So if you want to, you know, see what other students have, have done at different companies and internships, you can. And you can see what these students are saying about those companies. You even have the opportunity to reach out to any student in the network to ask about their experiences. So say you want to do an internship at Disney um, and you've never, you know, you don't know anyone who has. You can actually use LinkedIn to find a student, um, you know, a student who might have go to a different school who's done an internship at Disney and you can send them a message and, you know, see if they reply so you can get a little bit of insight into, you know, what that internship experience is like. On Handshake, there's also other usability. You can make appointments with us and RSVP to events. And all of our federal work study positions are also posted there. So I know there's actually still open federal work study positions even right now. So if you're still looking for one of those, um, that's another great experience you can gain. Um, that's actually, they're all posted to there as well. So Handshake is very easy to get onto. You go to career.mercy.edu and you can find it there. Um, it's just at mercy.joinhandshake.com as well. And from there, you just log in with your Mercy credentials. So all of our tools at Mercy are single sign-on, which means you just sign on kind of with the Mercy credentials and you're logged in automatically to all of our tools. So if you're looking for an internship, I highly recommend to get onto Handshake. It has all of our employers um, and it has you know, a lot of great opportunities on there. Okay, now job boards can be a little bit confusing. Um, even things like Handshake or LinkedIn or Indeed, they, they can get a little bit complicated. Now, what you're going to want to do is, as I said, is you're going to want to complete the profiles. You know, having those full profiles, it'll make you easily searched by employers, searched by people looking to hire you. Um, and it just shows kind of, you know, uh, the, a better picture of you that you took in the time, they've taken the time to, to actually fill out this profile. You know, you don't want to, apply for an internship and then have the employer look at an incomplete profile because that will they'll say you didn't take that extra step. So employers do want to see those profiles completely filled out. Now, you also want to do your research so you know exactly what you are seeking. You know, are you looking for an internship? Are you looking for a part-time job? You know, is this internship going to be paid? You know, how many hours a week do you want to work? What industry is it? You know, what type of internship do you want to do? You know, try to figure out what some of the keywords are. Don't just type in your major internship. That could lead to some pretty bad results. You're going to want to know like an exact title of an internship that you'd like to work. Um, so once you kind of have an idea of the type of internship, you also want to make sure your resume is in order. So you're going to want to work with your career coach, make sure that it's perfect. Um, you're going to want to get that resume perfect and then approved on Handshake. In order to apply to any of our jobs posted on Handshake, you will need to have an approved resume. 
um, to get an approved resume, you can work with a career coach or you can look at our user guides and then kind of put it on Handshake and a career coach will get back to you if it's been approved or if you need to make some edits and resubmit. Um, then you'll start applying with that resume to the internships that you like and you might notice that some of the positions require a cover letter. Now cover letters can be a little bit complicated and they can take a long time to write and no one loves writing them. Um, but you do want to make sure you write a new one for each job. You know, the letter, cover letter isn't just rewriting your resume. It's you pulling out different experiences that relate to the position that you're seeking. So you might want to talk about, you know, classroom projects that you've done that make you qualified. Um, maybe you had a previous internship or you did something similar or that, that, that'll showcase some of your experiences. So you want to highlight what you've done, which will make you qualified for the job that you're applying for. Now, if it says that the cover letter is optional, this is kind of a trick. They mean they want one. So if there's a space to put a cover letter, you're definitely going to want to submit one. Only do, like you're always going to submit a cover letter unless they specifically say do not submit a cover letter or they do not leave a space for you to put one in. So it is definitely something that takes a little bit of practice, um, but they can be really helpful to make you a standout candidate. Um, they are in our resume guidebooks, which you can also find at career.mercy.edu, which Sam has linked into the chat. Now, when you're also searching, you always want to use advanced search filters. You don't want to just kind of type in one keyword and kind of see what you get, because that'll create a whole lot of, a lot of results, and not all of them are going to be helpful. You know, some things that you need to put on are location, potentially experience level, the type of job you're looking for, but there are a lot of different ways that you can also limit your search. You can, you can have very specific keywords. You can exclude things. Um, you can even do it if you're looking for you know, a full-time job. You can exclude it by salary ranges. So whenever you're searching on a job board, make sure to use the advanced search features just because they're really going to be helpful for you to, to whittle down to exactly what you're going to be looking for. All right. So thank you for, for listening to our presentation. I think that's everything we have for you. Um, before we go, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So I guess I'm going to stop the share at this point, um, but this QR code will take you to the survey. Um, so be sure to, if you need to, you can scan that with your, with your phone's camera. It'll go right open to the, the survey. You have to fill it out to be entered into the raffle. And then Sam also posted the survey as a link into the chat. Um, so feel free to use either or, um, but take the survey and um, you'll be all set. Anyways, we do actually have a question that's in the chat. Can shadowing a doctor be considered an internship or volunteer experience? Exactly, um, it can be. So that's a great experience um, for someone who's in the med who's you know studying health science or plans on going into the medical field. Shadowing a doctor can give you some of those experiences. It's a great resume builder. Um, so I would definitely say that is um, that would be considered volunteer work or an internship. All right. I'm going to end the recording now as well.